Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Kiana, Miss Kiana, and um, myself and Miss Danielle are very proud and very excited to bring to you another exciting session for Hashtag Cap. It's March, and uh, we're still in the middle of a pandemic, so that means we're still virtual, but that won't stop us. There's a lot of really good information that we have that we should be sharing with you. But as a treat today, we actually have an expert in the field of college admissions. So man, do we have a good day in store for you. So sit back, relax, and let's roll and get into hashtag cap. <laughs> Big team today, a lot of people taking care of you, all right? As always, you have myself and Ms. Ebony is here to moderate. Ms. Danielle and Ms. Sherman are here. They let you in the room. They might be changing your names, um, but they will be monitoring and making sure that everything runs smoothly and professionally. Ms. Nikki and Ms. Shanae are here today and they are gonna be monitoring the chat room. So don't be shy, put your questions in the chat. Um, and they'll make sure that if you don't want to ask, they'll ask it for you. So nothing is off, you know, there, there's no reason to be shy. And then as a special guest today, we have um, the Reverend Dr. Keith Dickens, who is here, and he will be um, guiding us through a special talk on college admissions. And I'll get into that in a second. So first, I'm going to have Ms. Ebony go ahead and present our speaker for today. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure today to introduce Reverend Keith Dickens. Reverend Dickens serves as the senior pastor of the Parkside United Methodist Church in Camden, New Jersey. Born and raised in Bridgeton, he holds a bachelor's degree in political science and public administration from Grambling State University and HBCU, and a master's degree in divinity from Palmer Theological Seminary of, <clears throat> excuse me, of Eastern University. Currently, he is in pursuit of a doctorate in educational leadership from Rowan University. Professionally, he is employed at Rowan as the Assistant Director of Admissions and Student Enrollment Management. Reverend Dickens is the husband and college sweetheart of TPO member Aquanetta Lynn Dickens. They reside in Williamstown, New Jersey and are the proud parents of one daughter, Amani Nicole. Reverend Dickens is also affiliated with numerous organizations, including the NAACP and Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated. In his spare time, he loves reading biographies, traveling, listening to music, collecting art and sports memorabilia, and following his favorite sports teams the 76ers, the New York Yankees, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and his beloved Grambling State Tigers football team. Without further ado, I introduce Reverend Dickens. Thank you, Sister Ebony. Um, thank you, uh, ladies of Theta Pi Omega uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. I am honored to be with you today and with the students as well. Um, many of you I already know, uh, or some of you I already know. And uh, for those that I'm just meeting uh, for the first time, I'm excited to be with you today. My grandparents, my grandfather would say who was from who was from um, Macon, Georgia would say, son, you're walking in high cotton today. And so I am excited to be with you. Uh, just to give you, you know, I, I've been in college admissions, uh, admissions and uh, uh, enrollment management for 31 years at Rowan University. And I've seen from A to Z. And so there's no real, I wanna let, let the students know uh, to, I know at this time you're, you got all kinds of emotions. This college admissions thing is an emotional process and it is a journey. It's not a sprint, it is, it's a process. And so there is a beginning and although there may seem like there's no end, there is an end, but you have to go through the process. Um, and so the first thing that, that I advise students and parents to do is to do your homework if you haven't done it already. And, and for those of you that are on on this platform, I know you have uh, got off to a great start in doing your homework. And when I, when I say homework, what I'm saying is this, you need to do a self-reflection uh, of who you are. Start off right there. Who am I? Who am I? Uh, in other words, what are my likes and dislikes? And, and this is important because there's over 5,300 colleges and universities in the, in the country. 
And so, and they range from large to small, public to private, urban, suburban, royal, uh, co-ed, uh, single sex, religious, military, online, PWI, there's a lot of acronyms in, in colleges and universities as well. So PWI is predominantly white institutions, HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. Yay, right? So there's a lot of different, you know, uh, colleges have personalities and there's culture and, and, and all kinds of things. And then I need, you need to ask yourself, um, what am I passionate about? What am I passionate about? Passion uh, comes from a Greek word that means to suffer, right? It means to suffer. And so what am I, you might say suffer, what are you talking about suffering? Well, what am I willing to go the extra mile for? What am I so passionate about that I stay up at night and I think about it and I, I dream about it? What are you passionate about? What do you want to do, right? And how does that, and, is, and, and how does, does the campus life the campus and the college that you're interested in match up with your passions. So in other words, if you're applying to a school and you might say, well, I want nursing. Well, and you apply to the school and, and you come to find out, you realize that school later, that, that school does not offer nursing. So do your homework. Um, does, uh, does the college you know, offer what I'm passionate about? How is the campus life, the history, and culture of the institution? What is the mission statement of the institution? How long will it take for me to earn my college degree, right? What is the total cost of attendance? What is the acceptance rate, okay? What are the academic requirements for admission? You know, the first thing that as, uh, as an admissions professional, the first thing I do when I get an application, I go straight to the high school transcript. I go straight there. That's number one. Go straight to the high school transcript. And then I look at, I open it up, I look at the academic record. And so I'm counting academic units. So I'm, I'm, at, I'm saying, okay, the students should have at least 16 academic units. That's four years of high school English, three years of college prep math, algebra one, geometry. Where's my pen? I guess. Uh, algebra one, geometry, and algebra two, uh, two years of a lab science, two years of a social science or U.S. history, and uh, the rest can be elective courses that fall within those academic disciplines. Uh, foreign languages for Rowan University uh, are not required. However, we, we, uh, if you do take a foreign language, uh, we ask that you take two years of the same language. Spanish one should be followed up with Spanish two. And so, and then from there, I'm looking at, you know, the strength of the, of the academic program, the rigor of the academic program. Uh, have you challenged yourself? Have you taken courses that are really gonna challenge you? You know, you know some students take AP or uh, advanced placement or college prep or honors, those kinds of courses. And then we wanna see how you have fared in those courses. And so, uh, and generally, when I, I'm looking not so much at individual marking period grades as, as, as I am looking at the final grades from your freshman year, final grades from your uh, sophomore year, and final grades from your junior year. And then after the junior year, we usually take the class rank, uh, class rank and GPA, your, your, your cumulative GPA, right? And that can be weighted or unweighted. <clears throat> excuse me, that can be weighted or unweighted. And so then um, we're going to look at uh, standardized testing, SATs or ACTs, or some schools now have gone test optional. Rowan University is going test optional. And understand that these standardized tests uh, come with biases and, uh, you know, they, they, they're flawed. And so, you know, so I'm, I'm glad that we're moving away from the standardized testing and looking more at the academic record and the, and the student as a whole. Uh, and so, um, so some other things that you wanna keep in mind, recommendation letters, you know, get strong letters of recommendation, um, extracurricular activities, 
Uh, you don't have to kill your, my, my position is you don't have to kill yourself with extracurricular activities, but you need to have a few and be committed to those few that you are uh, involved in. And then volunteerism. Um, a lot of schools now are looking towards volunteerism. Um, and so you wanna be, we want students that, that, that are involved, that, that are not just going to, uh, to get an education, but have no social responsibility back to their community. And so that's all a part of the overall process of getting an education. So, so we want you to be, uh, to be involved. And you may say, well, I work. You know, I don't have time for that. Well, that's a good thing too. If you have a job, you know, that you can put that on, on your, uh, applica on your, res on your uh, uh, application as well. If you're applying to Rowan University, there's a $65 non-refundable application fee, but you know, some schools waive the application fee. So if you go to an open house, uh, they waive the fee. Uh, if you ask your pastor, to write a recommendation letter. I've done that over and over again. The schools will waive the fee. Uh, and these fees, you know, at Rowan is $65. At another school, it can be $75 or $100 or more. So these application fees add up. But if you have used the Common App, you know, for Rowan, it's $65. Um, and so, um, again, we you want to make sure that you do your homework. Do your homework. Do your homework. You can never do enough in that, in that regard. Okay? Um, visit the college that you're interested in now, but make sure you visit campus, you visit the colleges and colleges, you know, um, colleges, uh, range from, you know, you can look at something. If you look at, say, if you go and look at a big Mac and the marketing colleges do a great job. We do a great job in marketing. You look at a big Mac and then you go to the store and say, well, that doesn't look like what I saw in the billboard. So you have to look and, and do your homework, visit the colleges, okay? So um, go to the college fairs, find out if the college is highly selective, selective, non-selective, competitive, and find out about the acceptance rates, you know, how many students apply, how many students are actually accepted. Find out, find out about graduation rates. This is all about that first thing I talked about, doing your homework campus safety, activities, food, academic reputation, uh, financial aid, scholarship, community service. If, if, is the college a good fit for you? All right. Um, Reverend Dickens, do you mind if I ask a question really sure. quick? Because mm -hmm. you're hitting on a lot of good notes. I wrote down a lot of questions, but specifically to the one you just mentioned on the, the colleges are, are cracking down on numbers. How is the... How is the, the pool of candidates, how is that going to be affected? Are they going to be pulling less than they were keeping before? Uh, every college, that's a good question. Every college is going to differ a little bit, but um, at Rowan, we're, we're, we're down like 20, 23% in, in apps across the board. And so we're bringing in more students, even more now because of the pandemic. And we're starting to look for other ways to, to, to engage students. So we have Rowan, um, Rowan Remote or Rowan Online. Uh, when you see these schools that have global programs, um, University of Maryland, Maryland Global and all these kinds of things, those uh, online platforms have, have, were, had taken a backseat. Now they're becoming more center stage because of, of the pandemic. And so, uh, online learning is, is has increased as well, um, but we are we, we're trying to bring in as many students as possible. So, Reverend Dickens, do you um, can you show us? I know you wanted to show us what the um, what it looks like to go online and actually um, go through that process. Can you show us some of that right now? Yeah, I'm not going to do the complete presentation. I just want to use this as a kind of like a template for you all to see that. Every college, we're copycats, right? So, you know, whatever college you're thinking about, whether it's Howard, whether it's Grambling, <clears throat> uh, Spelman, or Rowan, <clears throat> whatever college you're thinking about, uh, you need to know that they have virtual presentations. Uh, admissions offices have virtual presentation. This is Rowan University's presentation. Uh, so every student that comes to Rowan 
um, or gets, gets this basic presentation. And we start off saying, welcome to a world of change. Um, then we start talking about campus location. So remember, location, location, location. Location is important uh, because if you're in-state, that means that you're going to be taking advantage of in-state funds. Uh, and then you need to know about out-of-state too. We, we love out-of-state students as well. Now we're a four-year uh, state public state university. We're a research inst institution as well. Uh, there's only two uh, research institutions, public research institutions in the state of New Jersey, uh, Rutgers University and Rowan University. Our location, we're 20 minutes from Philadelphia. We're an hour from the Jersey Shore lines, two, two hours from New York City, two and a half from Washington, D.C., and we feel like we're ideally situated for students seeking internships and employment after graduation. And so you need to know the history of institutions. Rowan was founded in, in 1923 as a normal school uh, for teachers. And so you need to find out, find out the, the institution, do the homework. When was the institution founded? What's their history? What are they known for? What programs do they have? How many campuses do they have? Rowan University has three different campuses. We have a main campus, which is in Glassboro, uh, New Jersey. Then we have our Camden campus and we have our uh, Mullica Hill campus, our West campus. All right. Um, you know, we have, you know, you have alums that have done great things for their institution, right? And so when you think of now, when you think of Howard University, you think of, you know, Vice President uh, Kamala Harris, you know, Howard, you think of uh, Chadwick Bozeman, you think about all these different people. And so, uh, you know, when you look at an institution, you know, you look at the institution's alumni and what they have done. Gene and Rick Edelman uh, have given millions of dollars to Rowan University. Uh, given uh, a few years ago, they gave uh, almost uh, $5 million for a planetarium. And then later on, they came back and gave $25 million for a, a fossil park. And the list just, it just keeps growing and growing. So, so know what the alums are doing. So that's part of your research and, what, and how they have given back to, to the institution to improve the institution. And so when you graduate from whatever school you go to, guess what? My wife and I get phone calls yearly from Grambling. Hey, how you doing? You know, and they, and we and we, see we we, we I understand the, what's happening because we do it at Rowan, right? We have students call, and they tell about their experience at Rowan University, and they would ask, you know, would you mind uh, contributing or giving back in some kind of way? So so understand that colleges and universities have academic programs, and so at Rowan there's over eighty majors to choose from. That you can, that's, the, that's when I was talking about passion. What are you passionate about? And if you don't know, because you're 18 years of age or 17 or whatever, you may not know. And that's okay. A lot of colleges and universities also have what they call undeclared students, uh, undecided. You haven't decided. And so for students that have not decided on a major yet, don't feel bad because they have professionals at the, on their campuses that will work with you and help you to determine a major, usually no later than the second semester of your sophomore year, right? Um, and you need to know how, you know, um, uh, how long does it take to graduate? You know, at Rowan, it takes 130 credits to, to, to earn your bachelor's degree. Most of the courses are three credit courses. To be considered a full-time student, you must have taken at least 12 credits a semester at Rowan. All right, to be considered a full-time student. To get financial aid, you must be a full-time student. All right, so, um, so you're talking about, you know, the maximum credits that you can take a semester is 18 uh, at Rowan. Um, you know, enrollment, you need to know about enrollment, um, you know, undergrads. At Rowan, we're not a small school. So we have 16,000 16, undergraduate, 19,000, uh, 618 across all disciplines categories. Uh, we're a research designated institution. So when, it when you start talking about small and large, um, you know, you start talking about lecture halls, right? And things like that. But at Rowan, there's no lecture halls. So we don't have uh, 500, 600 students in a large lecture hall, and you don't know, the professor doesn't know your name. So, so some schools have large lecture halls, 
and their research designated institutions and the professor will not know you. You won't have that engagement. Um, you need to know, you need to talk about retention rates. You need to be you know, concerned about retention rates. Student faculty ratio, like at your high school, you know, your average class size may be 20 or 21. At Rowan, the average class size is 20. The student faculty ratio is 17 to one. You need to know these things. So, so all these kinds of things, you know, it opens up, we want you to think globally. So our study abroad program is wonderful. Um, um, students can take advantage of the study abroad program if you have 30 credits or more um, and at least a 2.75 GPA. And if you have that, you can spend a semester abroad or a full year abroad. Um, your financial aid travels with you and you get credit for study abroad and you can cho choose to live with a host family in a dormitory or an apartment setting. So think about that as well. Uh, also find out about their career services because they have employers that come on campus and you can get interviewed for jobs right on campus. All right, so you wanna connect with in, in career services right away. Uh, some employers come on campus uh, for recruiting purposes to recruit students and not too many students show up because they think, you know, I, I got time, I'm gonna go, go my senior year. But what, what happens a lot of times at these career services centers, they help you with resume writing, job interviewing, uh, critiques, cover letter critiques. So you, need, you don't wait to the last minute to start planning your, your, your career. It's not only in the classroom, but it's also outside of the classroom as well. And some of these employers come that the students don't know this, but some of them come and they are pleasantly surprised because they even showed up, they get a thousand dollar scholarship. You know, that kind of thing from their company, or they may get an internship opportunity out of that. So make sure you take care of your business and do those things once you're on campus. Okay. I mentioned the Common App and um, high school transcripts and uh, SAT scores were test optional. So test optional now, um, schools are moving away. A lot of schools are moving away from uh, the standardized test and going test optional, uh, which makes it easier for students. And then what happens is too, if you go test optional for Rowan, for instance, there is an additional essay that you will have to write, that you'll be required to write. And if you're thinking about fine and performing arts, you know, like some students might think about going to Howard for, for theater because of Chadwick Bozeman or, or Felicia Rashad or Debbie Allen or some of these greats that have come out of uh, Taraji P. Henson, some of these greats that have come out of there and they go for theater. Well, guess what? You gotta have, to, you know, there's an audition that's required. Rowan University, we're, for many years, we were known for the Center for the Arts in South Jersey. And so students, we have an outstanding program at Rowan and so students that come to us, they have to have an audition or portfolio review before being accepted into the program. And then that, we, in the admissions, we wait until we receive the, the results from the audition or portfolio review before making a final decision on your application. Oh, great. Um, we have transfer admissions too. Schools have transfer admissions. And, and we've partnered, a lot of schools are partnering with community colleges. So for instance, what was formerly uh, uh, Gloucester County College in New Jersey is now Rowan College of South Jersey. And what was formerly Burlington County College is now Rowan College at Burlington County and so forth. So, so we're partnering with these community colleges and to make it easier for students to transfer in uh, as transfer. So if you're, when transferring, students usually are, are transferring about 60 college credits uh, into, uh, so you're looking at half at the community college and completing the, the rest at a four-year institution. Um, thank you for what you shared. Um, um, so my juniors, right now, if you have not done this, you need to do this. Study for your ACT and your SAT and register to take those tests if you are going to do it. Understanding it's a pandemic, understanding that there are flexibilities there. So if that's your desire, this is the time for you to be doing that. Um, think about those scholarships and grants. I'll tell you, um, I'll give you a nice little um, treat in the next slide about that. 
Um, and then uh, think about the TRIO program. And I put the last month, we talked about the TRIO program, but I didn't have the website up. So you can go ahead and jot that down if you need it. Um, look, that was the time for you to start looking for those summer internships, okay? Now's the time for you to start thinking about that and looking for some summer internships and also think about those extracurricular activities. And I know my scholars are superstars because um, several of you have extracurricular activities today and that is why you are here still and some of you are not on video because you're at your extracurricular activities. I know that, I see you and I understand and I appreciate you for being here even with that happening. Our seniors, Think about your scholarships and your grants. You're going to school, so you need to lock that money up, all right? And also look for local scholarships. It's a lot of money that's out there that people are not taking advantage of, and you should take advantage of it. Um, think about your student loan options. Wait till my next slide. And then also think about summer programs being offered by your college of choice. And if you have not had a chance to go to your school, maybe you want to schedule that college visit or go look at it virtually and find out what's happening today on your school of choice. Okay. So I told you I had a treat and here's the exciting treat. Um, last month, there was a lot of questions about financial aid. Just strictly financial aid and money. Well, as a treat for you, we do have somebody who is coming next month who works at financial aid at Morgan State University, and they are going to be here to answer all those questions, okay? So if you have any lingering questions, you're getting a little nervous, a little anxious, you're about to go to school and things still aren't locked up, and I wrote down some notes from Reverend Dickens today, and he said, scholarship upgrades, Okay, those are the type of questions you want to bring next month for our um, for our subject matter expert on financial aid. Okay, so with that said, thank you guys for joining us today. It is two o'clock. As always, if you have questions, lingering questions, and you still want to ask our guest today some questions that didn't get answered, stay on. Stay on. This is for you. Okay, but for everyone else, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you guys next month, fourth Saturday. 1 p.m. We're talking financial aid and how COVID has impacted our college admissions process. I'll see you guys later. Thank you.